So, on the board we have a gentleman uh, making six thousand a month. His expenses are fifty four hundred. So obviously his ca his cash flow is low, four hundred a month. Total debt is four hundred five thousand one eighty eight oh nine, and we have a personal unsecured line of credit. Uh, with Wells Fargo for $10,000 at 12.5%. We are in January 2020, and he currently owes $6,314.07 on the personal line of credit itself. So we're, we're, um, he had just did a chunk previously in 2019, so what we're doing right now is we're in the velocity banking process where all we're doing is dumping all income in, taking expenses out, trying to maximize cash flow as best as possible. Um, the monthly payment on the line of credit is $83.67 currently, but when you're doing velocity banking, that payment gets deleted, right? So it won't even show up on a month to month because technically you're paying it in advance with your income before it's actually even due. So you're, you're pushing out the due date each and every month, therefore you're pushing the payment out and you're gonna be pushing the interest out as well. So you are going to be paying a hell of a lot less than 12.5% per month. You're gonna be paying, you know, maybe 10 to $30 in interest if you're lucky, right? It could be less than that because the the balance owed compared to what's going in each and every month, we're looking at maybe a thousand to as low as the three fourteen oh seven that's actually getting charged interest. Okay, so so the money's going in, it's killing all the interest, and then money's coming out, and then he'll get charged daily interest on whatever he's actually owed on a day to day basis. So that's how this will be working here. What I would like to do is also compare the debt snowball strategy. I'm going to start doing this more and more where we analyze the debt snowball concept of just making extra payments each and every month with the existing cash flow that is displayed here. Okay, So these are conservative numbers. He could potentially cash flow more, nothing less than 400 there are uh, opportunities for him to increase his cash flow, such as if I look at his spreadsheet right here, um, on his living expenses, I told him, I was like, listen, you could easily get rid of, like, you can cut your entertainment costs by 50%, by 25%, by 75%, by 100% whatever you feel comfortable with most. If you wanna go radical and you wanna go super fast in terms of paying off debt, then you're gonna to have to have a level of discipline that you're going to need. Now, in the velocity banking world, it's not required for you to go that radical and still get really good results. We know this, but if you wanted to combine the debt snowball mindset of being super conservative, cutting back tremendously, and the velocity banking concept of maximizing every dollar, trust me, you're gonna go really fast, okay? So he could cut off cable, um, he could cut off, you know, Netflix, that, you know, crap is what I would say, wasteful spending. We could cut back on that stuff. Obviously, that would get my cash flow up. Another thing that we could do that like the debt snowball would go against is that we could not have an emergency fund that is separate from the line of credit, okay? So we could avoid saving money for a temporary period of time. Now, when I say stop saving, what I really mean is stop saving money separately from velocity banking. So if you want to maximize your money even further, you could say, all right, I'm going to stop putting money in this savings account that's not doing anything for me. It's money sitting 
in an account, losing value every single day. The purchasing power is losing value every single day, right? You have inflation, taxes, and just the loss of money, right? And it's not doing anything for you. Maybe it helps you sleep at night. Okay, I get it. Or having money in your shoebox, on your mattress, whatever it is. Now, with Velocity Banking, we could have a savings account in our line of credit. The way we do that is every six months to a year, we would increase the line of credit by the amount of money that you would save in that same time frame, six months, 12 months. So say for example, you're saving 200 a month times 12, that's $2,400 a year. We could easily double our savings position by, you know, if I'm in January of 2020, by the end of the year or somewhere in between, I could go from 10 to as high as 15. I can ask for a $5,000 increase, which technically I would not use to my full extent, right? Because 66% of the line of credit would be 9,900 if I'm at a 15 K limit. So you ha you're creating this space in the line of credit. So you could be chunking, right? To pay off debt. And let's say an emergency goes down in month three of your velocity banking method, right? You would have access to cash. So it would be no different than having money sitting in a savings account. Some would say, all right, well, if I had this savings account, I wouldn't have to borrow and go into more debt. That is true. On, an, on the other side of the coin, we could have had that same money working for us in the line of credit to bring down our chunking that much faster, save more money on interest, and increase cash flow even faster. So there is an argument to be made that, well, I probably would get more use in a shorter period of time by having access to the savings now. And this applies with your retirement funds as well. You could decrease or go to zero in terms of putting money away in a retirement account. So essentially what we're doing is we're re directing all this money that's going away from you and we're bringing it back to us through the line of credit which is at a very low interest rate when we're actually doing the concept so 12.5 is not really 12.5 right it's more like one two three percent cost right and the way we're offsetting that is by what drastically wiping out the debts at a faster rate than that avalanche or that snowball, okay? So I wanna lay those out for you. So he has those opportunities to do that or not to do that. What I'm simply gonna do is just show me working with the 400 cash flow, and let's see what results we get. And then we're going to compare it to debt snowball with the same 400 cash flow and go from there. So very, very easily what I did was I took the current balance on the line of credit, 6,314.07, and I basically minus 6,000, add 54. Minus 6,000, add 54. Minus 6,000, add 54. I did not factor in the 83.67 as, uh, as adding to the, you know, lowering the balance. So what I'm simply doing is under performing the results here, right? Is that, did I say that right? Grammar? Terrible. Um, so we're in January and I'm starting, so I'm not even factoring in his, uh, his cash flow for January, right? So if we were in January, then the number would be 59.1407. So I'm actually starting in February. So by the end of February, that would be my balance. So all I'm doing here is uh, underestimating, being conservative, because with velocity banking, it's tough to be 
really accurate with the numbers um, because things can go down, emergencies, right? Whatever the case may be. Uh, maybe three, four months down the road, he decides to go on vacation with his wife uh, and, you know, blows the whole concept out of proportion. So far, I have not had anyone really do that. I've had had clients have emergencies, which has set them back, but then we were able to recover due to having access to more space in the line of credit. So it served its purpose the same with having an emergency fund, okay? Served its purpose. Um, so if we were to do velocity banking with just the 400, then we would go from the 63.1407 down to somewhere around 3,000 or less by September, like towards the beginning or towards the end of September. This is just doing the 400. Like I said, I did not factor in the payment, right? I let that payment cover my cost of borrowing, which from 8367 interest maybe 20, $20, 20, $30. So you could do the math. Obviously the number would be less. So I am confident that by September doing velocity banking, my balance on this personal line of credit would be below 30% utilization. And at this point in time, what I would like to do is have him apply for an increase. He went from going from, uh, going from 10K to as high as um, 20,000 being like the max or 15K, right? Being like the minimum now. We can, I am super confident that we can get this increase with no issue because when you look at how much debt he wipes out on the line of credit itself in a eight, nine month period and then paying the monthly minimum payments on all of his other debts, the only debt I did not put on here is the mortgage. So if you're wondering, okay, that doesn't equal 405, it's because I left out the mortgage. We're not even close to starting on the mortgage just yet. We have all of these that we want to kill first, and then we would jump to the mortgage. But including the mortgage payment and every other monthly minimum payment, you could also verify your increase to, to see if you're in the right neighborhood. Like, for example, uh, with Wells Fargo, their personal credit lines, I think, go all the way up to like 50K, if I'm not mistaken. So it wouldn't be smart for him to try and go from 10 to 40,000, right? But to verify an extra $10,000 increase on a line of credit or anyone watching that is considering increasing their line of credit, say you've had it for a year, six months, whatever the case is, what I would do is add all your monthly minimum payments on your other debts that you've been paying off right? Just paying the monthly minimums, add those numbers up and also add what you've paid down in the line of credit itself. Add that number up together. You can say, okay, this is how much I've lowered my DTI, my debt to income ratio, right? This is how much debt I've killed in the past X amount of months, six months, a year, whatever that number is, say it's 10,000. Then you could say, okay, half of that I can definitely get in in uh in terms of an increase and then the most would be whatever that number is so if it's ten thousand boom so that's how i uh legitimize my reasoning for increasing the line of credit also according to the bank's information i would call and ask them hey when is my line of credit eligible for an increase on the line of credit itself when am I eligible? Six months, one year. Um, do you do you want to see the balance at zero before I apply for an increase, or it doesn't matter? So in this case, in most cases, it, um, it doesn't really matter if you have an uh, an existing balance on a line of credit because of the way that we're doing it. There's going to be times, especially over here, you know, six grand goes in. Technically, he's paid off the line of credit, right? but then he's also pulling it out. So 
when it registers in the credit bureau, it might show that he paid it off, right? Somewhere around this time. And that's when I would want to take advantage and apply for that increase. So it doesn't really matter if we have a balance on the line of credit before applying for an increase. Is it better to have a zero balance? Maybe, not sure. But what I do know is that the um, credit bureaus, they actually, your, your credit score would actually increase a little faster. And this is according to some credit uh, professionals that I've spoken to or heard them say, so this is secondhand information, but I've heard them say that by, by keeping a balance on your credit card and actually getting charged interest would in fact increase your credit score. Now, why is that? Because the credit bureaus and the credit institutions, they only make money, right? when you don't pay off your balance, right? And you're paying all these interest rates. So that's how they profit from money. There's, there's not even a service. It's just debt and they're charging you on debt and that's their product, right? Um, so I've heard that, I don't know how true that is, but me personally, I'm always on the, on the side of, hey, let's pay as little interest as possible, okay, 30%. I'm gonna apply for an increase. My chunk amount has now increased itself if I go to 15K. If I go to 20, my chunk amount would be 13,200. Now, if I have an existing balance on the line of credit, I wanna factor that in. I wanna minus that from my chunk. So you would do if I, if I have a $20,000 personal line of credit in this, for this gentleman, you do 20K times 66%, 13,200. 13,200 minus your existing balance on the line of credit, that's your chunk. That's a safe chunk. You could go higher. I would not recommend it. You could go higher. Obviously, you would kill more debt. Yes, we understand that. Um, but this is a comfort level. This is a personal preference. So me, my comfort level is always going to be that 66% range. Range. The only reason why I would go above is if there is a large cash flow gain potential that we could, you know, acquire from this. So we're going to work with 15k. 15k with uh, 3,000 owed. I would go as high as maybe 8,000. I would not do 10. If I did 10 plus three, I'm nearly maxed out 13,000, only got a 15K limit. If I do 8,000 plus three, puts me at 11,000, not terrible. I'm at like what, 70 plus percent utilization. The reason why I'm gonna authorize that, the number that I came up with was $8,710 because of the cash flow gain potential that we could get from this move. So looking at the debts, we are going to adopt the debt snowball mindset of tackling the smaller debts first and going up from there. Um, simply from a perspective of building momentum, a lot of this is a personal, you know, you have your numbers, but then you have to put the human being with the number, with the numbers. And that can often change things, people's comfort levels. So people who are looking at the debt avalanche method, you better have some high patience for that. Because if we were to go after the mortgage, knowing that we have all of this, it, it doesn't really make too much sense to me. You're gonna be there for quite some time trying to kill a 300 plus thousand dollar debt with only $400 in cash flow. Whereas if you went opposite and you went the momentum, the, the snowball method, right? The snowball effect, starting small and going down a hill and it ends up a big, big boulder, right? Of snow. Well, same thing with uh, when, you're, when you're doing your finances, same methodology here. So 8,710, as my chunk in September would consist of this debt right here, the 
this debt right here, this debt, and that debt. <clears throat> so I would get a $28 cash flow gain, $56 cash flow gain, $23, and then $254.76. Now, why did I tackle those above the other ones? Pretty simple. It's the fact that the balance is quite low and the cash flow gain is very reasonable. So you get 361.76. And when I was talking to this gentleman, you know, he wanted to kind of go after this debt, the 10,759.86 for a 261.20 cash flow gain. And we were able to prove that that would not be the best use of my money, right? Even if I factored in this debt with the other two smaller credit card debts there, um, it would be a lesser cash flow gain. So when I'm doing velocity banking, I always, uh, my, my priority is cash flow over everything. Because I'm sure you can agree that with cash flow, the more cash flow I have, the faster I'll go, period. Even with the debt snowball concept, the more cash flow you have to work with, the faster you're gonna go, period. There's no argument there. So sometimes people look at the interest rates of what you're, you're you know, getting charged in interest, which is reasonable. I'm gonna do the same thing with velocity banking, right? But cash flow is usually my top priority over everything. And so by September, I'll wipe out one, uh, two, three, four debts all at once and get 361.76. And so you do 400 cash flow plus 361.76. Now you're at 761.76. And new cash flow and the balance on the line of credit should be anywhere from 10k to as high as 11 right remember we went conservative right didn't even count the cash flow for January so minus $400 you could probably be someone in the neighborhood of 26 and then factoring all those payments the 8367 so technically the cash flow is 48367 but i didn't i didn't count that um, so that number would also bring that balance down i was even uh, letting him know that look september should be your goal to bring that line of credit to zero but worst case scenario you'll have a balance of this much you shouldn't cuz i'm overestimating um, but you know it should be less than that for sure so based on that around that number or less 10k to 11k should be my balance on line of credit and then i'm just doing velocity banking with now a cash flow of 761.76 plus you know that 8367 um obviously these debts would have been lower when I actually chunked at them. So that's why, you know, just do the math, you know, 28 times eight months of payments, boom, on each debt, minus it, tack on a little interest. I even overestimated this chunk of 8,017. It could be less, could be less of a chunk to, to wipe out those four debts. And if there is space, then we would apply it to maybe this debt right here, the 36.2099 for a $48 cash flow gain. Now my objective now is to do velocity banking, bring that line of credit back down to 30% or less or zero, right? Preferably for this gentleman, I would like to make a chunk by either January of 2021 so by the I would say what was that that's like a 13 month time frame we wipe out four debts at once and then the next debt that I would want to go after 
is gonna be one of these two debts right here. I'm actually gonna skip over the smaller debts. And the reason why I would do that is again, cash flow. That 353 is calling me for some reason. And the 261.20 is also gonna be very attractive because when you, when you factor in 13 months of paying 261.20, during the time of velocity banking and paying off other debts, obviously this number is going to be down. This 15085 that number is going to be down quite a bit. Um, and the rates, the interest rates are lower than these higher ones, which also lets me know that more of this 353 is going towards principal rather than this 63 and the 48, which obviously maybe a good third of that money is going towards interest on these smaller debts. Another reason why I am considering skipping over these two credit cards is he currently has 0% uh, offers on these two. Not offers, they're already in force. So he is currently paying 0% on these two cards. And it's one of those cards where six months, um, a portion of it expires on interest, and then another six months later, another portion expires. So for, um, for this 5,956.66, the interest will expire completely. I think the whole debt expires in August. And then this 3,62099, a portion of it, I think 2,000 of it expires somewhere uh, in October of 2020, and then the rest expires in like April 2021. So that was enough for me to say, all right, I'm willing to eat some interest over here for a huge cash flow gain over here and an interest savings, of course. And then that would put me at a thousand plus cash flow going into 2021. And I'll be able to come right back to these two smaller debts and possibly knock out, you know, the remainder of one of these two. So, for example, going into uh, 2021, say January of 2021 or February, I go to make a chunk, right? This is wiped out, right? This is done. This is done. This is the line of credit. So... I'm not even looking at that. This was a car, so that's done. All right, and we have we have these two guys, these two big credit cards. These are all credit cards, by the way. All right, the only thing that is not a credit card on here is this debt. This was a car. So let's say I'm in January 2021. Whatever the balance is on this one or this one, I'm most likely going to pay off one of the two. I might be really tempted to either try to tackle that, but my senses might tell me, um, or just looking at math, not just senses, but looking at math, I might go ahead and just wipe this out, right? This credit card for 261.20. And looking at the balance on one of these two, I might be able to squeeze this credit card in as well. Might be able to squeeze that in there. If I do so, cash flow goes up to a thousand, right? More than likely, seven sixty one plus two sixty one twenty plus forty eight, and then, like I said, maybe doing some other things to increase his cash flow. Um, he is going to get a pay increase this year of twenty twenty. That will help. All right. So I'm doing. I do the chunk in January February of twenty twenty one. And I'm not going to wait to hit zero on the line of credit. I'm going to try and get the line of credit to maybe 50% or lower, especially if I have 15 to 20 K in credit limit, and then try to wipe out these two like immediately right after. Because when you factor in now 15, 16, 17 months of paying 353, I'm going to knock out quite a bit of the initial principal balance there, okay? 
So that's the way I'm looking at it right here for right now. So for the first um, 12 months, right? Just looking at the first 12 months, in the first nine, I get my cash flow to 761.76, okay? And then I have, you know, to do velocity banking, September, October, November, December, wipe out some nice debts. What I'm gonna do now, is let's go ahead and compare that snowball, okay? And let's see how efficient my scenario is here for him. Let's see if it makes sense. So we're gonna do the same thing, but on this side, I get to be a little more accurate. I'm going to give that snowball the advantage to save me some time here from trying to calculate on a month to month what, what interest I'm paying. Um, so we're going to use the same exact numbers with, you know, 400 in cash flow, and we're going to start in January. So if, I'm, if I was to compare, and this is what everybody should do if you are a Velocity Banking student of mine, is Debt Snowball is your benchmark. It's your measuring stick for how well you're performing on Velocity Banking, because if you're too close to debt snowball, what I mean by too close is like, um, you know, you basically paid off debt at like the same time debt snowball did. You might have did something wrong. Maybe you didn't chunk high enough. You under chunked, and you basically borrowed money for no reason because you would have gotten the same results had you just made extra payments. So that's another reason why we do chunk at these bigger amounts is we want to get ahead of debt snowball. So very easily we can say, all right, well, if I'm going to track the first 12 months against velocity banking, what do I have to work with? $400 times 12 is $4,800. This is the most amount of cash flow that I have to work with in those 12 months to knock out whatever debts I can knock out, get the cash flow up. Um, following the debt snowball concept of just making extra payments, we're gonna skip the baby steps. I'm not going to uh, include creating an emergency fund. We're just going to do extra payments, all right? If I were to create an emergency fund, which would be ideal because on this side, you don't have a line of credit, right? So if you're doing debt snowball, you don't have a line of credit, therefore you don't have anything. So you might want to create an emergency fund, which would take three months to do with 400 in cash flow. You know, you, you wanna get a thousand bucks or more. So it would take you three months just to do the first step, just creating an emergency fund, right? Um, so we know that. So it would take about three months. So that would put you in March of 2020 to create an emergency fund. But let's, in this case, let's give it to them. Let's say they already have an emergency fund. Okay, cool. With that snowball, the first debt that I need to pay off is obviously gonna be the smallest one, the 215.85. So with 400 cash flow, minus 215.85, equals what, right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm not even going to, uh, I'm not gonna factor in the interest to uh, make the numbers look better. And let's see if it beats that snowball. I mean, let's see if it beats velocity banking, even with all the advantages that I'm giving on this side. And this is important to do, right? Uh, to really verify how well you're going, all right? So 400, Minus 215.85, that leaves me with 184.15, right? So that means I got $184.15 left of cash flow for the month of January, uh, 265.02 minus the, the monthly payment for the month of January, $28 and then minus 184.15. So 
So it leaves me with $52.87. Uh, the end of the first month, right? So this will be the first month, January. We got $52.87 left on the second smallest credit card. Second month, I now have $423 cash flow, okay? Minus $52.87, right? Cash flow goes up $28. So $423 minus $52.87. Now I'm left with $370.13 in cash flow plus $28. Okay, so $370 plus $28. Now we're at $398.13 in cash flow. Second month, so I'm in February. Now the next debt, obviously to tackle in this particular case, would be the 1877-76, okay? Now, I did say earlier that on this side, you don't have a line of credit, but in this case, he does owe money on a personal line of credit, so we do have to, you know, factor in there in terms of us paying it off, which we will, but we won't use it. So we'll pretend like this was a loan. We'll pretend like this personal line of credit was a loan, okay? Um, we'll just, for, for debt snowball's sake. Um, so the very next debt to tackle is the 1877-76, and we are in February, second month, right here in February. I got 398.13 in cash flow. 1877.76 minus $56 from January uh, minus another 56 for February. I'm at 1,1765.76 minus that 398.13. dollars 63 cents is my remaining balance end of February so now the third month March March comes along you got to do 13 67 63 minus so 1367 63 my new cash flow is the 400 plus 23 plus 28 dollars plus now 56. So 507. So we're just going to minus 507 each month, right? Until we get that down to zero. So 1367, 63 minus 507, 860 end of March and then we'll do it again minus 507 again 353 63 you see how boring this is with that snowball I mean this is just uh this takes so long the other thing you have to remember guys is when you're doing debt snowball for most people you have to wait till the end of the month until you have all your cash flow to actually make that extra payment you have to be careful not to spend your cash flow, right? You have, to, you have to hold it, maybe in a separate account. You're like, okay, this is cash flow. Okay, this is cash flow. Okay, this is cash flow. End of the month, make the payment. You have to understand that when you're dealing with any type of debt, simple interest amortize, that the time that it takes for the money uh, to be paid, right, to make that extra payment, if you wait till the end of the month, you're most likely going to get charged the well especially for simple interest debt because with simple interest credit cards credit lines you the interest needs time to accrue so if you give it time to accrue guess what you're going to pay more interest but like i said we're not even factoring the interest um, we're trying to you know give them the benefit of the doubt here and see just how well it works so february this was march this is april and now come may 2020 look i'm already five months in haven't even 
haven't gotten that far yet, but technically we have more cash flow than Dead Snowball right now, right? I'm at 507 already. So 507 minus 353, 63, and now I'm down to, I have that credit card paid off, it's done. 153.37 is left uh, in cash flow for the month of May. So I can apply that 153.37 uh, at this credit card, the 3,620.99. That's the next card that um, is the next smallest debt. It is at 0%, but I did say earlier that it expires in like, I think one of them expires in, in August of this year. Um, and then, yeah, I think it was this one. This one, a portion of it expires in October. And then the rest in April. This one expired already in August. And then we'll go from there. <clears throat> but we're not going to worry about that. So 153.37. Um, let's see, uh, May. That's five months. So $48, right? Let's say I'm going after this one now. We're going to go after this. With Debt Snowball, we've already gotten rid of this one. We've gotten rid of this. And we got rid of that. Gone. So now we're dealing with the circled one. $48 times five months, that's $240. Okay, so we'll just put that right here. $240. $3,620.99 minus $240. Minus the 153 cash flow balances 3227.62 end of May. Okay. And now my cash flow is the 400 plus the 23 plus the 28 plus the 56 and now the 48. So 555. All right, new cash flow, okay, 555, awesome. So now we're just gonna, now this is obviously gonna take some time. So 3,227.62 minus 555. Now I'm at 2,672. 62, that's June, minus 555 again, 2,011762, July, minus 555 again, 1,56262, July, now I'm in August, one of the credit cards that has expired on interest now, minus 555, down to a thousand seven sixty two August September 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 with velocity banking by September I still technically have not paid off any debts yet we would have applied for an increase and then paid off four debts at once then that brought me to 36176 so by September is where velocity banking is going to take off from debt snowball that Snowball had the lead in the beginning, right? It immediately had more cash flow. We paid off the smaller debts first. I'm at, I'm at 555 right now, September. Over here, I'll be at 761.76. That line of credit, right? Most of it got knocked out, but not all of it, but I would have paid off four more debts, okay? So let's go over here. Let's keep going. Minus 555. Now I'm at 452.62. This is October. Another credit card has expired in interest by this point in time. So now 555 minus 452.62. Um, November, I would have paid off this card. So November, this is done. And I'll have $102.38 left over. That 102.38 k 
can go here. This will be the next credit card to knock out, right? That line of credit would be down maybe around where this number was, and then this number is going to be down a bit. So now November, we can do $63 times 11 months of payments. That's $693. So we can go like this, $5,000. 956 and 66 cents minus 693. What do you get? 5,956, 56 minus 693. It's 5,263, 66, and then minus an extra payment from the cash flow of 102.38. Your balance on that credit card that I have circled. It's 5,161.28, end of November. And now my new cash flow goes up $63. So 555 plus $63 is 618. December, this is the 12th month now, 5,161.28 minus 618. 5,000. 161, 28 minus 618. So you'll be at a balance of 4,543.28. So check this out. I, g I gave them a three month advantage to let them build an emergency fund. So I assume that they already had one. If they did, if this person does not have an emergency fund, which in this case, this gentleman does not have an emergency fund. He only has $400 cash flow a month. His emergency fund is his line of credit. On this side, three months to make an emergency fund, that would put me in March of 2021 for me to get a balance over there on the line of credit, on the, on the credit card. The other thing I gave them an advantage was I didn't even factor in the interest rates on any one of these debts. I simply went off principal payments and pure cash flow numbers, right? So by December of 2020, best case scenario for debt snowball is that their cash flow would be at $618 and they would have paid off one, two, three, four debts. So they would have four debts paid off working on the fifth and their cash flow would only be $618. Velocity banking, even underestimating velocity banking results, right? <laughs> By September, I'll have a cash flow of $761.76. So that is... Let's let's see. Seven sixty-one seventy-six cents minus six eighteen. So I have an extra one forty-three seventy-six on top of that snowball times the month of September, October, November. So four months. So I'll have five hundred seventy-five dollars and four cents more cash flow for twenty twenty than debt snowball, and I'll have. Um, let's see, one, two, three, same amount of debts paid off, four, but more cash flow to work with, right? So four debts paid off sooner, right? They have four debts paid off by December. We have four debts, four debts paid off by September. And now we're doing velocity banking. Technically, you could say that uh, on this side, we also really did a lot of damage to the line of credit itself. So that helps, right? That adds to our advantage here. By December or January, we would be making our second chunk potentially, right? Towards, what was I saying earlier? Towards one of these two debts and possibly squeezing in uh, the, the 59 or the 36, one of those two, right? So now you see the math, the difference, 
And this is perfect for those that, you know, yes, you, you already believe in velocity banking, but it's important to test yourself. It's important to run your numbers against that snowball and see, all right, man, I'm happy. Shoot. Not only that, I have the capital. I keep my cash flow in the process. I use the bank's money first, and then I just simply paid myself back at a faster rate. So when it's all said and done, when this person's completely debt free, they'll have a large line of credit, personal line of credit. They'll have all these credit cards to work with. When we get to the mortgage, they'll have a humongous HELOC that we can use to borrow from to invest in real estate, to invest in a business, to invest in, I don't know, the stock market, Forex, whatever he wants to do. We can keep creating more wealth and building an income um, that will sustain itself where we won't have to work anymore.